All right, so continuing on with uh, number 97. Um, so in this case, we have a very kind of uh, typical type problem. We're going to have our uh, acid. And I know this is going to be an acid. I see I have a, uh, a couple of available protons that can be uh, donated. So that's going to react with water. And then we're going to have the conjugate base, which is a species that has one less proton. And then hydronium. And then normally I would give you a Ka. Um, 4.46 times 10 to the minus 7th. And from here, this should be able to be solved rather straightforward. Um, we know that it's going to... Oops, sorry. Struggling here. Uh, we know that it is going to be a... Um, uh, a typical ice box. This is also going to be a weak acid because my Ka is very, very small. Um, so given that, I'm going to jump right down into saying that Ka is going to equal the concentration of my conjugate base and hydronium over my initial acid. And that is going to be a term of x x and then 0 0.125 minus x and at this point because my k is going to be small i'm going to assume this is a weak acid this x is small and that assumption we've kind of done uh, multiple times so that reduces down to x squared over 0 0.125 equals 4.46 times 10 to the minus 7th. And at that point, we then will solve. So x is going to be the, that Ka multiplied by 0 0.125 square rooted. And that's going to give us a value of 2.36 times 10 to the minus 4th molar. And that right there, term of x, is equal to our concentration of our hydronium and our concentration of our uh, conjugate base. So we've now kind of solved this. We solved this. We now want to do pH. We know that pH equals negative log of our concentration of hydronium, which is negative log of x. Uh, so if you take that number 2.36 times to the minus fourth, you run that through a logarithm, you get 3.63. So that's going to be your, your pH. And that would be typically uh, where we'd stop. Now I want to do a little bit extra on this one, just because I've chosen an acid, um, which is actually multiprotic. Um, it's diprotic, and the word protic is just kind of comes from proton. And I see that I have two protons that can actually be given up. So if I look at HCO3 minus, that could also react with water to form uh, another conjugate base and water, or hydronium, I'm sorry. So this also has a Ka. I'm going to call it Ka2, and this is a much smaller Ka. 4.69 times 10 to the minus 11th. So this is uh, even even weaker acid. Um, now, when I go through, though, if I wrote a Ka2 term, uh, this be Ka1, I see that I can write CO3 two minus hydronium divided by minus. Now, here's an assumption that I'm going to make. I see that my Ka2 is really, really, really small, times 10 to the minus 11th. So I'm going to make an assumption that we'll, we'll show that it's going to be valid in a second that the concentration, because here's the, the, the quandary we're at. Oh, I like right, there we are. So I see that in both cases, I have um, a product that is hydronium. So that means my hydronium should be larger than just what I get here, my initial X term. And I see that my HCO3 minus is going to be consumed in the next one. So that number should be slightly less than that uh, 
term. However, this Ka2 is so, so, so small that I'm actually going to assume that that change is negligible. Um, so if that change is negligible, then CO3 2 minus, I'm going to use uh, uh, a Y instead of an X just to avoid confusion. And then my concentration of hydronium, I'm going to assume is going to be the same. Because this forward reaction is going to be so small. And then my reverse reaction, I'm sorry, my, uh, my, my product from my first, my, my reaction from the second, my HCO3 minus, is also that same term. So those actually cancel out. So this all drops down just to the Y, which is the concentration of CO3 2 minus, equaling our Ka of uh, this number times 10 to the minus 11th. So that would then be this very final term. Um, typically, this stuff would be all extra. We wouldn't we wouldn't uh, do that. I've given you all monoprotic. I wanted to show this to you just so you'd be exposed to it. Um, and in this case, this the the assumptions of the way I've done this, I saw that this K eight two was really 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 small. So because of how small it was, I assumed that the change in concentration of my hydronium and my HCO3 minus from the first one were going to be the uh, effectively really, really, really small. Um, and if we look at this number right here, this concentration of CO3 2 minus is going to be the same as our concentration of hydronium. And this is a number of times 10 to the minus 11th. And initially, hydronium was a number of times 10 to the minus 4th. So if you do a number times 10 to the minus 4th and then you add, you know, times 10 to the minus 11th, you're adding, you know, 0. 000000, I've lost count, but you know, a lot of zeros and, a, and then uh, you get to the, the 469. Um, so it's a really, really, really small decimal number. So the assumption that this is being unchanged is kind of almost like the same assumption for that we made up above that X is so, so, so small. So technically that would be, you know, 2.36 times 10 to the minus fourth minus X or plus X and the bottom one would be two, 0.36 times 10 to the minus fourth uh, minus x because that's going to be consumed, so it'll be a little bit smaller. But we're going to just make the assumption that that uh, they're going to be the same. Um, jump down to the next one. So in this case, we have formic acid. It has a pH of 3.25, and the question is, what is adding a small amount of each of these substances going to do, and will it raise the pH? So let's start thinking of HCl. So HCl, we know is a strong acid. If it's a strong acid, it will completely dissociate. And it will dissociate into um, our H plus and our Cl minus. Um, H plus is the same as writing H. Uh, so when I write H plus, that's the exact same as writing hydronium. Those are analogous. Um, so in this case, we think of formic acid of HCHO2. It's going to react with water, and it'll be in equilibrium. And it's going to have hydronium and CHO2 minus. So that's going to be the, the chemical reaction that we're, we're thinking about. Um, I'll leave that colored in. Because we're going to refer that to for a bunch of them. Now, if I add in a strong acid, it's going to increase the amount of my products, right? It has a common ion with product. So if it has a common ion with product, if we think back to Le Chatelier's principle, that's going to shift it to the left. It's going to shift back to the reactants. And if it goes back to the reactants, um, then that means that it's going to decrease the percent dissociation. Um, but, and if initially you say that, you say, oh, if I decrease my um, percent dissociation, um, then therefore I must uh, uh, increase my, my pH. But that's incorrect. You will decrease your percent dissociation, but you've added more hydronium. Um, so what, in that case, my pH will drop. Um, your percent dissociation will also drop. Um, but the, the key, key step from here is um, you're adding acid. So it's going to 
uh, lower the pH. So it's not going to raise. So that's not going to be the case. Um, if you add in sodium bromide, sodium bromide is going to be a salt. Um, and that's going to break up to Na plus and Br minus. Um, those aren't any common ions. Adding those really shouldn't do anything. Um, you you might get like that sodium to coordinate to the the negative uh, formate ion or something, but that's not going to change your pH or anything. There's no common ions. There's nothing that's going to happen there. Same thing when we look at this one. This is also down here, a salt, um, and that's going to break up to, to K plus and Cl minus. That's not going to have any effect. Now, if we look at this salt, though, uh, and C, that's going to also break up to sodium. But the other one is going to be our uh, our conjugate base. And in this case, um, I have a common ion. And that's common ion is with the product. So in that case, my percent dissociation will decrease because it's going to shift to the left, same as we've done in A. However, in this case, um, our pH will actually increase because I'm going to have to consume some of my hydronium, and I don't have any extra that I got to, from that HCl. So therefore, this one will have a pH increase. So um, of these, A, B, and C will not change the pH, while um, C will. Continuing on, so let's calculate the percent dissociations. Um, and when we kind of think about uh, each of these, this very first one is a very typical type problem. This is going to be the kind of same as always. Um, I'm not even going to write a reaction. I'm just going to immediately go down to say, hey, Ka is going to equal x, x, 0 0.15 minus x. That's been the, the same type of structure we've always done. Um, and I see my Ka is pretty small, um, uh, 10 times to the minus fifth. Um, if your Ka is going to be anything less than like times 10 to the minus third, go ahead and just make the assumption um, that it's going to be a, a weak acid. So if we make that assumption, that's going to be um, x squared over 0 0.15 equals 6.4 times 10 to the minus fifth. And once I get that, I can solve for x pretty easily. x is just going to be my square root of 6.4 times 10 to the minus fifth and 0 0.15. And that's the same. And remember from the titration uh, sheet, I, I told you that x would be equal to Ka times concentration of your initial acid, initial square rooted. That's this exact same term. Um, and you'll take that, solve for that, and that gives you a value of 0 0.0031 molar. Now, to calculate percent dissociation, that's going to be x over my initial acid concentration times 100%, and this gives you 0 0.0031 over 0 0.15 times 100%, and you take that, run that through a calculator, and that gives you 2.1% dissociation. And if you remember, to make this um, assumptions that we did um, up here, we need to have a percent dissociation less than 5%, and this confirms that. So that this, this step, as although it's answering the question, finding the percent dissociation, that's also confirming that our assumption was valid. Um, so this was the the kind of old hat, nothing special. Now, the next one we're going to see is we're going to add in a common ion effect. And um, that's going to be when we have our K term look a little bit different. Um, let's go ahead and stop the video here, and then we'll come back and uh, finish up B in the next video.